promised by popular demand. I have David from Netflix is too hot to handle on the line. How you doing, David? Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks for having me. I'm doing great. The sun is shining in London and I'm a happy man. Sun never shines in London. So maybe this is this quarantine will be good for London. How is quarantine treating you? What have you been doing to keep busy? Uh, I've been doing a lot of training, primarily training and hanging out with my family. You know, it's been such a good time for us to get closer. So there are some benefits of being in a small space with your family, I think. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I have to ask you, do you prefer this type of quarantine over the sexual quarantine that you had on Too Hot to Handle? Uh, well, I'm pretty much in a sexual quarantine now as well. Not going to lie, um, I don't live with a partner, so there's no naughtiness of any kind. It's like being back in the retreat. Yeah, right, exactly. It prepped you. They were Netflix was just prepping you for this isolation, I'm sure. Well, a lot of people are comparing Too Hot to Handle to Love Island. Other than the non-physical aspect, what would you say separates this show from that and other reality shows? I think there's a couple of really key differences between uh, too much to handle in any other reality show. So especially Love Island. Like with Love Island, you have to be in a couple in order to stay on the show. If you're not, then you you leave. That's one of the key differences is that the winners were either in a couple or they were single. It wasn't about having to show growth as a pair, but it was about showing growth as an individual. And that was something I thought was pretty inspiring, really, because it shows how we're individuals which come together to make something which is more than the sum of its parts. And I think that's such a powerful thing which a lot of people can, can kind of take away from the show. Um, I think the other thing is that the point, the purpose, the whole reason behind Too Hot to Handle was to become better people. It wasn't drama. It wasn't like to hook up it wasn't to get into a relationship the point of the show was to make us better people and i think that that's something which when i found out i was so happy about <laughs> you're all about self-improvement david i mean you especially uh, another interesting aspect of the show is that it combines people from all over the world is that something that you took into consideration when getting to know some of the women you know in the off off chance you really did find a strong connection would you have been able to make the long distance work or at least been willing to move? You know what? I think that we're so connected in the world right now that if it ever was going to work, if something long distance ever was going to work, now is the time. To be honest, when I was there, I was not thinking about that stuff at all. It was, it was not what are the logistics of this working in the long term. It is, am I making a real connection with somebody right now? I want to live in the moment. I want to live in the present. I want to feel all the feelings. I want to see if this is real. And then the next things that come after that, that's the considerations at the time. So it wasn't really too much of a consideration. But obviously there was some, you know, you kind of know, like, you know, Rhonda's from Atlanta. I live in London. You know, everyone's from all over the place. So it's not like there wouldn't have been barriers, but, you know, love finds a way. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that. Love can conquer all. You know, you definitely felt all the feels this season. And, you know, you were so vulnerable. One of the most touching moments from the series was episode four's nonverbal communication workshop, where you practice soul gazing, which I love, with Rhonda herself. You actually started to cry. I mean, you were having a real moment there. What did you learn about yourself from that exercise? I'm curious. That was, that was such a... It was emotional. It was powerful. I think powerful is probably the right word because, you know, they're okay, like, right, guys, we want you to look into your partner's eyes. You're not allowed to talk for five minutes, right? If you ever looked at someone for, any, like, for a period of time, it, it's a little bit awkward. And you kind of have to push through that awkwardness. And, you know, for like the first couple of minutes, you're like kind of smiling at each other and like giggling a little bit. And then it, you start to let that barrier drop down and that's when it starts to get real and you can start to really see through into somebody's like depth you know into their soul and start to understand them more and I think that that is what 
overcame me is that all these little pieces of information that I'd learned about Rhonda over the time that we've been getting to know each other, they all started to come together and align. And I just started to see how like things over her life, things must have been really difficult for her at certain points and how she's still so strong and emotional and compassionate and friendly and funny. I was like, oh my God, this woman has been through so much and she's still all of these amazing characteristics. And I was just like, I don't know, it just really got to me. And I think that for me, the thing that I learned from it was that there's, we all kind of operate on this surface layer a lot of the time, but the more powerful stuff often scares us. And that, that uncomfortable feeling is where we have to go a lot of the time in order to get progress and to, re and to get real. And I think sometimes that's, that is scary and daunting, but I was like, I want to do this. I want to commit to this. Let's, let's dive in. So I cried on international streaming TV. Awesome. <laughs> I can only imagine though, the DMS you're getting from girls after doing that. So I have a feeling you're going to be fine at, with the crying, but you know, I'm curious comparing like this experience to maybe previous relationships, because during that soul gazing thing, you sort of said you stopped seeing Rhonda's body. And was that something you've ever experienced before with relationships? By that, I mean, gaining a deeper connection beyond the physical. Yeah, I've definitely had that before in the, I've had deep connections with people in the past. Um, I think that it's, that experience was very unique. I've never done anything like that before. And so it was definitely special in that sense but having deeper connections with someone i think that it's important that we can see that their connections come in all different ways and depth doesn't have to be romantic you know like i care for all of the girls that were on the show i have really special connections with all of them because we all went through something together and we shared those vulnerable moments with each other and we right. didn't judge each other and we kind of grew together um you know like i've had relationships in the past which were really deep and i've been hurt and that was something which caused me to put a big guard up to kind of push down my real truth and my vulnerabilities and things like that and kind of repress them and hide them and i think that by doing this show it's really highlighted to me how i do want more you know, I want to have a real special connection with someone. I want to have that like all encompassing love where you're completely besotted and like infatuated with each other. And I think that that is something I'd kind of repressed for a while. 